people have to be able to make their mortgage payments and the way of life in this part of the country is you have to be able to farm and ranch and sometimes that means uh, plowing native grassland. Part of what we're doing is trying to maintain the natural setting that we have on the ranch. We have uh, Sand Creek, it dissects the ranch for seven miles, runs right through the middle of it. The seven or eight miles of uh, Sand Creek is a situation that we found when the trappers and the early settlers came through. All these small ephemeral streams that we see today in the plains parts of Colorado, Kansas, Montana, Nebraska, they all had water storage and they were all percolated and populated with beavers. Most native grasslands disappeared so they could be farmed. But this ranch, because Sand Creek goes through the middle of it, it was protected from that. And now we have the opportunity to continue. That's the challenge we have is how do we not mess it up? When you're driving along the highways, you don't really notice that you're looking, especially out here on the Eastern Plains, you can see for 50, 60 miles in one direction. And you think that's just barren land that, you know, really doesn't have that much diversity or a contribution to the environment. But I think when you're flying over it and you start to see these different, um, biotypes and systems, you realize the diversity that is actually out there. And you see the areas that maybe have some emergent wetlands and they're just magnets. As, as you go over a place like this ranch, it, it is a potential to keep these places intact and become a magnet for seeds, species to move out into other areas. One thing that is a huge focus in these wetlands is we have a lot of beaver. Look out the right side, you can look right into the wetlands on Sand Creek. So these wetlands provide just a huge number of both intrinsic value and ecosystem service values to humans. Beaver are considered what's called a keystone species. And they, what a keystone species, what that means is that given their numbers, they have a disproportionately high and positive impact that reverberates throughout ecosystems. Not only do they mitigate a warming climate, they provide amelioration of many of the impacts of a warming climate in water storage, as you know, particularly in our surrounding, if you look at the surrounding landscape, which is dominated by agriculture, uh, those soils are actually releasing carbon, whereas the soils in that wetland are storing carbon. So they act as a really important balance against the impacts that we did by, by our agricultural practices. So. Maintaining that wetland, maintaining those beaver dams, it ameliorates both climate change and its impact. This is an ecosystem that we've basically moved on from. We don't understand it. We've got more information on the high country throughout Colorado, and we probably have more information on the moon itself than we do on the importance of an ecosystem out here where we are today in Lamar on the prairie. Native grasslands have so long been overlooked. Uh, ten years ago, we started trying to do some conservation work, and every time I mentioned the fact that we were on the eastern Great Plains and a short grass prairie, there wasn't a lot of interest. Because when people think of conservation, they think of mountains and trees and streams and scenic areas. When in truth, the short grass prairies of the Great Plains have more diversity, have more species of wildlife, more species of plants, insects, and they contribute to the environment more than most people realize.